Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have all new beach DIYs for you using items from the Dollar Tree, um, maybe some things from the Target Dollar Spot, and I'm also going to do a beach tear tray today as well. But I want to get started on our first project. I'm going to use one of these little wall shelves from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I love to make signs out of these because they are a great source of wood. So I'm just gonna take this one out of the package. And your girl has been on Pinterest and I got some inspiration for some projects that I wanted to try to make my own and this is gonna be one of them. So I wanna kind of make an oceany background, but I want it to be like very abstract. So these are the two different colors I'm using. This one is the Caribbean blue, a little bit darker blue that I'm gonna do on the bottom half of the sign. And then this one is Cloudless by Apple Barrel, a little bit lighter for the sky. Just a very simple, like, oceany background. And kind of blend that all together. And I wanted to do the background. I wanted to do little shorebirds. And I want them all to be, like, on, like, little nautical pilings, you know, out in the water. And so I'm going to try that with driftwood. So... I'm gonna start with twine, and this is the thicker twine that you get at Walmart. You could always use the one from Dollar Tree as well. Sometimes I like the thicker one. And I'm just gonna tie a knot there on top because the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a hanger for our sign because I want this to be a hanging sign. And now since this was a shelf, it's got like the holes on the top. It's also got the holes on the bottom. So I'm actually going to take advantage of both. So um, the ones on the top, I just made the hanger. And the ones on the bottom, I'm going to incorporate that into my design. So to start with, I'm just going to kind of go through, tie a knot in the back this time. And then I'm going to have like this rope wrapped around all of my like nautical pilings, these little pieces of driftwood, but these are the pieces of driftwood that I just have from the beach. I'm gonna cut these down a little bit and make them shorter so I can maybe make like four of them for the little birds to stand on. And we're gonna make our little shorebirds out of sea glass from the Dollar Tree. So super cute, super fun. I just took my driftwood to my saw and cut down four pieces all about the same size. I do want them to have a flat top so I have a place for the bird to perch. And just gonna scatter them. Um, I think that that one's a little too long so I cut it down a little bit and that looks pretty good. If you don't have any driftwood, you could always use sticks from your yard or you could also um, use some of those like a little um, wood slices from the Dollar Tree. They have some of those that might work too. The wood stems themselves might be a little too short. But I just wrapped the twine around a couple of times and then I'm going to glue that twine to the sign. So I kind of glue it to the little piece of driftwood and glue it to the sign kind of all at the same time here. So what's attached to the sign is basically the twine, not really um, so much the wood. Um, but once it's tied on there pretty good, I think it is going to stay. So I was going to go under, but then I decided to go over on this one because I don't want the twine to be super flat against the back. I want this to look very three-dimensional. So I went around a couple of times by going over the top. Makes it kind of stick out a little bit. And then I'm going to glue this one down too. I also glue... Uh, the twine to the driftwood a little bit, but I put some glue underneath of that to glue the second one down. I thought about, I usually like to work with odd numbers, but for this one, kind of four really worked. So we're going to do four. This time I went under to kind of make this one kind of go more to the back of it, like we did the first time. Wrapped it around a couple times and then glue that one down too. I like the jagged edges, but I really wanted my jagged edges to be towards the bottom of the sign. 
And once that one's dry, I'm going to kind of do what I did before, where I go over on this one to kind of make the twine stick out a little bit and wrap that down a couple of times too. Make sure everything is pulled tight and then glue that down. And I love this idea. I was thinking of doing something like this for a, like a dock. I guess I still can. Um, but for this one, I wanted to put little shorebirds on top of it. We love all of our shorebirds here in Florida. They're so cute. And I wanted to do a craft revolved around them. So um, if you put a little bit of glue on the tip of your twine, it's going to make it easier to go through those holes if you're using one of these shelf signs too. And you could always do this on the other side shelf sign too, but you know, I think it's going to be skinnier. And I did reinforce mine a little bit by adding a little bit of extra hot glue um, down behind some of them if I could without really seeing any of it. Now, this is the sea glass that we're going to use from the Dollar Tree. It's got several different colors. Um, as you can tell, I love it. I buy it a lot. So it's got like light blue, green, um, like real blue, but it's also got like white. So I want white. So I'm looking for like four pieces that I could kind of make look like shorebirds. It's going to be a very abstract one. Um, <laughs> so I'm searching for a fourth one. I'm going to have to open another package. It doesn't really have to look like a bird. I'm just anything that you can kind of like that one looks like it's kind of got a tail. We can kind of make this work. And I choose four of my favorites. I didn't really want one to be like way larger than the other one. So I think that looks pretty good. Now it's time to put these little guys together. Now, I was kind of thinking that they were kind of washed out with the clear. It's kind of clear against the blue, right? And I really want the little birds to look white. So to do that, I actually paint the back of them to try to make them look a little bit brighter. So I'm just using white acrylic and I'm just going to put just an, a quick coat on the back. That way they'll kind of have a white background since they're kind of more clear than white, right? And I think that made a difference. So I just did that on all four of our little sea glass pieces. And now we can start making these into little birds. I was kind of thinking, okay, what looks like a head? What looks like a tail? And the first thing I'm going to do is use a black Sharpie. They have these like fine tip Sharpies at Dollar Tree right now too, which are awesome for crafting. And I just drew two straight little lines of four legs, kind of mapping out where we're going to attach the sea glass to it. And I'm going to do the same thing here on all four. I was trying to keep my head out of the shot because it was kind of hard to see from this angle. <laughs> and just to make them look like they're standing there, I think the legs definitely give them like a bird like look. We're also going to add beaks to these little shorebirds by um, drawing on the backboard, um, not like physically putting one on there. And then I just go ahead and put one eye on each of them. I have like three going one direction, one going the opposite direction, and just little black dots for little eyes. And then I use an orange Sharpie. I'm loving all the Sharpies you can get from Dollar Tree now because I'm a big fan of Sharpies. I use them for crafting all the time. I like them for projects like this because you don't get any bleeding or anything like that that you might get with a paint pen. So I just draw little beaks where they're going to be like I haven't attached anything yet because I want to make sure that I don't get any Sharpie like on the sea glass itself. But I think that looks good. So we are ready to attach our little sea glass shorebirds. And I do that just by a little bit of little drop of hot glue on the back of each one and securing that to our sign. And they kind of look like shorebirds, right? You kind of have to look for it on some of them. <laughs> But I think with the beaks and the legs, it totally gives you the feel that I was going for. So there it is. That is our first DIY today. I think this turned out really cute. What do you guys think about my little sea glass shorebirds? I think they turned out so fun. Everyone in the family were a big fan of these little guys. Now it kind of what makes me want to make more things with some of that sea glass from the Dollar Tree because they turned out so cute. 
And the driftwood was free, so really it only cost a couple of dollars to put this project together. It's fairly large, and I think it turned out really cute. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to use another piece of driftwood. I found this nice, funky piece of driftwood at the beach the other day, and... I thought this would make a great wall hanging and I have been dying to use this new macrame, macrame twine that they have at the Dollar Tree to make something cool. So I'm going to use that in a combination of those wood slices. That's what I was talking about before that you could use if you didn't have driftwood. And for this one too, I mean you could use really anything for the top. I want it to be driftwood but you could always use a stick or something like that too. It would be super cute. And I just cut a long piece of that macrame and I just looped it and pulled it through just like that. I'm trying to remember, I looked up the name of these knots and I don't remember even what they were. Okay, I looked it up. They're called a reverse lark's head knot. <laughs> Never going to remember that. But basically you just loop it and pull it around and through itself. And you have two pieces of the macrame twine hanging down. Now, if you can't find this macrame line, you can probably use any kind of cotton twine. Um, I used to always use the cotton twine from the hardware section at Dollar Tree, but sometimes I've even gotten it like at the food section at other stores too. Um, any kind of white thin rope like this is going to give you that same effect. And for this part, you could even use twine too, because it doesn't really matter if this part's white. But I think I have enough room on this driftwood for a four different lines. And what I wanted to do was to try to make some macrame sailboats. A lot of people are making like the macrame feathers, and it's kind of the same technique that you would use for the macrame feathers, but we're gonna try to make ours look like sailboats, so. I have all four of my lines ready to go, and now it's just a matter of building them. So what I want to do is I looped it. I'm trying to figure out, you know, kind of how big. I kind of go bigger than I probably need, and I just start cutting off some pieces of the macrame. Um, that was um, a macrame roll that I had already started, and I still had plenty to do this whole project. It really goes a long way. And I'm going to do the same kind of knot here over those two cords. Just making a loop and pulling it through. And I have two of the lines here on the left now. And I'm down like, you know, maybe like two or three inches. Now to do it the other way, the trick is to put your like two lines on the side opposite that you want it and to pull that through. And that reverse lark's head knot, I'm guessing it's the same as that I used to attach it to the pole before. So nothing fancy here. Then I do the same thing on the left side. So I'm going to alternate all the way down, left, right, left, right. And once you get going, it's pretty fun. It does take a little while. I think it took me about an hour to put this project together, but it turned out so cute. Once you get it tied, you're going to want to kind of push it up the line as tight as you can. You want these to be together as much as you can. And you want to just keep repeating that same knot. So I take the two lines, I put them on the opposite side that I want them to be, make a loop, and then just bring them through and make it tight. I don't want these to be very big. What I ended up doing was a total of 16 um, little um, pieces per sailboat. So eight on each side. So we're gonna make this go faster because again, this one did take me a little while. This one was a fun one to do. This would be a fun thing to do if you're watching TV or something like that and you want something to do with your hands. It is a fun project for that. So I think that's enough. I'm gonna take my scissors now and we're gonna try to start cutting a sail. I haven't combed them out or anything yet. I have them still all like in one piece. I thought it would make it easier initially to cut that shape of like a back sail here when they are just all still kind of tied together like that. Now I'm going to flatten out the other side here. And for this side of the sailboat, I'm going to kind of do an arch and then have it like swing back into a sail shape. So those top ones are really short. But see how it kind of looks like a sailboat? 
I'm gonna like shorten this one a little bit. And then for the boat itself, I wanted to use some of these little wood stems from the Dollar Tree to tie those onto the bottom to make that look like the boat part of the sailboat. Now, I wasn't super um, happy with the color that they were. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe with a little Antique Wax by Waverly. And we're just going to stain all these a little bit darker um, to kind of make them go with the driftwood a little bit more. You could always use driftwood for this step as well too. I kind of wanted mine to be a little bit more uniform here on the bottom though. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain all four of those. And then I just need to um, attach that to the bottom of our little sailboat. I'm gonna kind of go under and then wrap it around but have one piece go to each side, if that makes sense. The right one goes to the right, the left one goes to the left. And then I'm going to tie that together there in the back, pull it around on top of the wood stem there. I wanted to leave a little bit of distance between the sail and the little boat part. I so I pull it around and then tie it off again. And then pull it to the back and tie it off again. And I kind of want to hide my knot back there, so I'm going to tie it off at the back, double knot it, and then I can just cut off my excess twine, and we have a cute little sailboat. I hope you can tell they're sailboats. I hung these in my hallway. I think they turned out so cute. Now, to give it that macrame look, I'm just using a hair comb, and I'm unwinding the fibers of that cotton twine. You don't really have to unroll it. The comb kind of does it for you and kind of straighten it up. I think that with like some macrame, you can spray some stuff on there to like make it stay stiffer. But I think we're just going to kind of leave it like this. It actually did a pretty good job of keeping the shape. But once you comb it out, you're probably want to going to give it a little trim to clean it up a little bit. And now we're going to go ahead and start working on the next one. My driftwood kind of goes up and down and I'm going to kind of go with that. I'm doing this one closer to it because I want it to look like, you know, like four ships, like swimming and um, swimming, <laughs> floating in the ocean. And so I'm going to do a total of 16 on this one, too. I'm a pro at this point. <laughs> I've only done macrame a couple of times. I did macrame on here for a big centerpiece for Thanksgiving pumpkin. And that one was really fun to do. I did a little bit fancier knot on those, but it was so much fun. So I'm kind of a fan. So I got this one 16 on. And so I'm going to do the same technique I used before to tie this on, double tie it in the back, and that will be my little boat. If you wanted to attach your little wood there at the bottom with a little hot glue and make sure it doesn't slide around, you can. But I found mine kind of stayed put. So I'm going to kind of cut that same shale shape out again. Um, you know, they all don't have to be the same. You could make like different style sails if you wanted to. Like this one's probably not shaped quite the same as the first one, but it's pretty close. And then I'm going to comb it out with my hair comb. I always keep this with my crafting station, this hair comb, because I use it like to make gnomes and stuff like that for their hair and stuff like that. It seems like I'm always needing something to comb out. So we're gonna do the same thing here for sailboat number three and sailboat number four. We're gonna fly through these. And uh, this made such a fun wall hanging. I put this in my hallway for like kind of my year round decor. And I kind of have it hanging underneath my little school of fish that I made with a shore living fish. And they look, it just looks so cute there. And um, the colors are very neutral. We don't really have any colors besides like the ivory and the brown. And anytime I can craft with driftwood, I, I always love it. So got this one all strung together. And now I'm just going to cut out my sails. Kind of keeping like the shorter sail on the left. Like I did on all the other ones. And then tying this off. And then tying it off on the back.
And we're going to race through the other one here because it's basically the same thing. I think we've got it down by now, these little uh, macrame sailboats. But I think this turned out so cute. They were so much fun to put together. And I'm actually a big fan of macrame. It's definitely a skill that I never had before, but I think it's really fun for DIYs. So we're gonna really go fast here on this last one, tie that all off and do all of the steps. I think um, I kind of like the ones with a little bit more of a curvy sail, um, but you can experiment with yours and do, you know, you could always use colored twine as well if you wanted some colored sailboats. I've been finding different colors of twine at Dollar Tree lately. Um, kind of like this, like with like bright colors though, like purples, pinks, blues, really pretty colors. So I'm gonna use that same twine and just tie a knot off here on one side of my driftwood. And we're just gonna make a simple hanger with the same material we used to make all of the little macrame sailboats. And that's all there is to it. Just knot it off on both sides tight enough to keep it on there. And we have our little four sailboats made out of macrame. I tried to um, make sure that like kind of the bottom of mine were kind of flat when I hang them on the wall to kind of give a little bit of separation between the sailboat and the little um, wood slice that I have at the bottom. But this is how they turned out. And I love them hanging on the driftwood. I think that looks really cute. What do you guys think about this DIY? I think it's really fun, very creative and beautiful. Okay, next DIY, you guys are gonna die. This project is so cute, but it's also so funny. So I wanted to do a mermaid project. So I'm gonna use one of these little mermaid tails from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree and a couple pieces of driftwood, a Dollar Tree sign, a couple of seashells from Dollar Tree, and um, some little wooden clothespins that I got at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make a mermaid clothesline. So I saw somebody make something kind of similar, but I thought I would do my own take on it and see if we can make this with supplies from the Dollar Tree. So this is just, it's a pretty nice square sign from the Dollar Tree. It's not real heavy duty, but I wanted a standing sign that could sit on a shelf. It does have this little bump out part on it though. That's the only bad thing I don't like about these signs from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm gonna use a little heat and start getting that off. I don't really want to rip like the sign that's behind it because I want to be able to recover that. I wanna use some of that removable wallpaper there that you see in that beautiful tropical print. That's my favorite one of the removable wallpapers from Dollar Tree. Now, as you can see, this was like, glued on for real. So I'm gonna get it wet. And then I'm just gonna use my little scraping tool um, from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree to scrape it off. Kind of working one section at a time, but the water definitely worked. And I, um, I did have like one little nick in it, but I just go and fill it in with a little bit of spackle because I wanna make sure that you don't like have any imperfections in this because I wanted just to be able to peel and stick that wallpaper right on. So I'm just gonna put a little spackle in that hole. And now I'm not gonna paint it or anything first. You can kind of see this pattern, um, like the laundry room part through it, but not really, cause we're gonna add stuff to it. So before putting stuff on there, I could kind of see it, but not really. So I'm just going to sit that bottom, um, bottom up there on my removable wallpaper, draw out the shape and just cut out a front panel for my sign. Now I don't want that wild print that's going on on that sign to be visible. So I'm gonna cut stickers for all four sides as well. And I kind of do two at a time because those two sides are definitely gonna be the same size, but I wasn't sure about the other way around. Dollar Tree signs can be a little bit inconsistent and just cutting those little side panels down. And basically we're just gonna peel and stick this entire sign with that tropical um, 
wallpaper. I thought that would be a really good background for what we're going to do for a Little Mermaid's clothesline. What I want to do is I want it to look like a mermaid has hung up her clothes on a clothesline. And so it looks, she's going to hang up her tail and she's going to hang up her little shell bra. So this was really fun to put together. And I know, I think it's, I don't know if a mermaid takes their tail off, do they? But mine's going to. <laughs> so I cut off a strip for all four sides and just kind of laid them on there. I did a pretty good job of getting them on there straight and to size. But you can always trim it down if you need to. And now we can peel and stick the front. And I love using this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. It's a great way to take a Dollar Tree sign like this and make it look way more high end. And look at that, I didn't even have to paint it, right? I am gonna use a little bit of a scraper though because there was a little bit of air trapped in mine just to give me a flat surface so that it is good and secured all the way around. Now for the clothesline, I just grabbed a couple more pieces of driftwood that I have from the beach. You could always use sticks for this as well. And I want it to be long enough to go to the bottom because I these signs don't stand up very well. But if I had this in the front as additional support, I think it's gonna help the signs stand up a little bit more just because they're not very heavy. So what I'm gonna do is just cut both my pieces of driftwood down a little bit so they'll have flat bottoms and that's gonna help in standing the sign up. So I wanted to do one piece of driftwood on each side of our little clothesline. And then I'm gonna use just Dollar Tree twine to form the clothesline. So I'm gonna start by uh, attaching that to my clothesline uh, or to the pole first just by knotting the twine on there and tying that off. And it's actually gonna be a line that goes from one post to the other that we can literally hang the stuff on there with the clothespin, so that's super cute that they kind of dangle on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this side since I have it tied off, just by using hot glue all the way up. And this project, every now and then, I make a project that really makes me smile, and this is definitely one of those. It's not only beautiful, it's just so funny. So I'm gonna pull my twine around, and I was trying to decide if I wanted to do the front or the back. I decided to go around the front to kind of make it stick out a little bit more, kind of like before when we were doing those pilings for the shorebirds. And I wanna tie it um, where it'll be taut, right across. So then I tie, double tie that, cut off the excess twine. And now it's just a matter of attaching the driftwood to the other side to make the other side of our clothesline. So I'm just going to attach that with hot glue too. And now we can start working on our mermaid outfit. <laughs> I'm gonna make the tail look a little bit more textured and then I wanted to make the little shell bra as well. Now there's already a great little um, texture like drawn on it. So I'm gonna kind of go with that. I do fill in the hole um, with a little spackle and then I'm using my um, Sherbonder, like my fine tip hot glue gun from Walmart to just draw the little mermaid scales on there with hot glue. My Ryobi one is way, it releases way too much glue to do something, a fine detail like this. But basically that's gonna set up and give it the texture of a mermaid tail. So I just go over all the existing lines on there and just fill that up with hot glue. Now for this tail fin part, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna do hot glue um, and make it wide too, like the little stripes here are here on the tail and just cover that whole section with hot glue. And to make it wider, I just had to kind of go in there and do another row right next to it. And then you're gonna wanna use your hot glue, your, your heat gun or um, blow dryer to get rid of any of the little strings because once you paint it, you'll be able to see it. But look at that really cool texture that's on our little mermaid tail. Now, I picked out two little white shells that were about the same size to make a cute little shell bra for our mermaid. And then I'm just gonna use clothespins 
I think I'm only going to need like two clothespins to hang these up. Um, I do, they do have smaller clothespins than this at the Dollar Tree that you can get on the little, um, photo holder that's kind of like macrame, if you know what I mean. But they're colorful and I kind of wanted mine to be more neutral. So, I just take a piece of twine and hot glue that into both sides, kind of like where, um, bikini straps would be for this mermaid. And then I take a second piece of twine and glue that along the bottom, like uh, the straps of a bikini would be on the bottom. So it has like, it's, you could tie it around the neck, you could tie it around the back kind of thing. Now this has set up enough for me to paint it. So I'm just going in here with, this is like a parchment color. It's kind of between like an ivory and a white. And I use a brush so I can kind of get in all those different areas since we gave it that great texture. And um, then I kind of want it a little bit more um, texture to be seen. So I'm just going to kind of go over um, all of the scales that I put on there with just a little um, dark tan color here. I'm not going to leave it quite that colorful. I just wanted a little bit of distressing. You could also do this with Antique Wax by Waverly and kind of wipe off any of the excess. And I didn't really want it to be quite that brown, so then I go back and distress it with that same parchment color that we used before. It's kind of the same color as our um, the shells that I chose for the little um, mermaid bikini top. And so the tail can hang on that side and the little top can hang over here. I was trying to decide exactly how to hang the top. I'm just gonna kind of hang it, I think, by one of the little straps kind of like hang it sideways and then use a clothespin here. I'm going to clothespin our little mermaid tail to the clothesline. Super cute. And then I do put a little hot glue underneath the clothespin to secure that in place because it's holding that whole mermaid tail up. I'm not going to attach the mermaid tail at all to the sign. And then I'm going to use a clothespin on this side and close pin of like the line to it. Kind of like that. And I hot glue that little close pin down as well, but the rest of it's just gonna kind of dangle down like this. Um, that one piece of twine is a little long, so I do trim that one up a little bit so it doesn't like kind of overlap the side of the sign. And then I also kind of glue that down, but kind of like, make it look like it's kind of free flowing just so it doesn't like really stick out from the project and kind of have the other ones just kind of dangle down like that. And this is our little mermaid clothesline. I think it turned out really cute. I'm a big fan. And it, the, the little um, sticks on the front definitely help it to stand up better. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute. I love the tropical background and the whole idea behind it, the little mermaid hanging up her tail and her shells. So funny. And perfect for coastal decor. What do you guys think about this one? Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video, let you know that I have a private Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. We would love to see what projects you're working on and you can find out when I post new videos. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. Okay, let's keep crafting. I found this little palm tree in the summer section at the Dollar Tree. It is a wood palm tree. It's meant for kids to color, but we're gonna have fun with it. And I wanted to make a large beach sign. So I'm going to use two of these long, thin signs from the Dollar Tree. Kind of put them together to kind of make my own little palette sign, but using some signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to kind of alternate like the holes on the left and the holes on the right, um, just to kind of mix that up a little bit. And I want to paint them complementary colors, but very kind of close colors of blue. So this first one I am doing in Caribbean blue. Just that one color. I also do the edges in case you can see any of them. Once I get this put together, it's going to be like a little palette sign where the, it's going to be two boards, not quite touching. And then for the second sign, I mix together that Caribbean blue and turquoise to kind of make my own little custom color. 
Um, I wanted something close in color, but a little bit different. And we can make a really cute little beach sign using that little palm tree from the Dollar Tree. So I like to try to mix it up with some of the items that are available now, like in the short, in the summer line, because I know a lot of the short living line stuff is gone, even though I have gotten lucky um, a few times lately and found some stuff at some of my smaller stores. Maybe they hadn't had a chance to put it out yet. So I'm going to now flip it over and now that I got it dry and then we can start putting this together. Now these Dollar Tree signs are thin so they do like to bow. So I am going to put lots of braces on the back and I am just using Dollar Tree popsicle sticks to do that and hot glue. Going to start on the edges and if you brace these enough you can get it to flatten out. It's the only thing I don't like about the thin signs from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes I double them up to make them thicker, but that's why I use the shelves a lot of times and the chalkboards and stuff like that from the Dollar Tree, just because they're thicker. So that's kind of how it looks like with five. And I decided it was still slightly warped. So I'm gonna add like four more <laughs> popsicle sticks or cheap. <laughs> and glue those to the back and finish bracing that out. And as you can see, I've got like a small opening between the two boards. Kind of give it that palette look. And I wanted to do a really fun, easy little sign for this. Um, using that palm tree kind of over on the left. And then we can do like a beachy saying over on the right. So this is the little palm tree. Um, I'm just going to take that out of the package. I don't need the markers and I don't really need that like black um, cutout that's on the front where it has markings on there. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it on the back that way that won't um, come through. But I um, wanted to do like a white on blue sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is distress it with a chunky brush and some ivory acrylic just working in one direction. And then I kind of blend um, with a baby wipe, kind of wipe off any excess, give me a very light distress for Coastal Farmhouse. And then I'm gonna use that same ivory color for my palm tree. Now I'm gonna use my Cricut and we're gonna cut out a saying for this. And I end up using my matte white um, Cricut vinyl that I got on Amazon that I've been <laughs> obsessed with. I love it because it's a matte finish and not the glossy. And so I'm not sure why I painted that ivory, but I do go back and kind of make it more white. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and kind of measure how big my boards are and go to Cricut and design a saying to go on here for a summer sign. And I will share this Cricut file. Cricut can be kind of weird sometimes about um, the file sharing. And so I'll try to share it if you have any problems. I'm um, getting it to work. Just let me know and I will put it on my Google Drive. Now I have something really weird happen with this. My Cricut did not cut that out properly. I have never had that happen. I don't know. Maybe my Cricut had like a glitch or something like that. So I'm going to have to cut that first part out again. But basically I wanted to say one of my favorite little expressions here. Um, palm trees and 80 degrees, like two of my favorite things and it rhymes. So it's fun. So I went and cut out palm trees and again, um, because my Cricut didn't cooperate this time it cut it out perfectly. And I'm just going to weed out any of my extra vinyl. I really like this matte white uh, vinyl. It's got a clear background, um, a backing on it. It doesn't stick to my mats at all. Like the Dollar Tree vinyl does. And then I like to use this paper transfer vinyl. This is the six inch one. And I have um, both of those listed in my Amazon shop below if you need some vinyl yourself. And it's great, the paper transfer, um, because you can reuse it too. So I'll show you that too. You can kind of see through it enough to line it up and just attach your vinyl to the sign, easy peasy. And then I'm gonna reuse it for the palm trees part. It's sticky, but it's it's sticky enough, but it's not so sticky that it's going to take any paint off since I just painted this sign. And if you um, kind of push it down with your fingers instead of scraping it on, I find that it makes it even faster and you have less worry about damaging any paint. I'm going to use a sanding sponge to make sure that is all down and secure. And then uh, my palm tree was a little rough too, so I sanded that down as well. 
gonna hot glue my little palm tree over here on this side of the sign. And just glue that over the two different palette signs. Now that's when I realized, why did I paint this ivory when my vinyl is white? So <laughs> I'm gonna use a little makeup sponge and some white acrylic this time and brighten up my palm tree to make it match because I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I should try to get some of the matte vinyl and ivory too, since that's one of my favorite colors to use too for coastal. And then I'm gonna use like that blue color that we used before, um, the Caribbean blue, and I'm gonna lightly distress the vinyl to kind of give it that hand painted sign um, vibe. And then I'm also gonna distress lightly the palm tree, kind of bring out some of the texture that was on there already to give it that coastal vibe. And I love this. I love the fact that my blues are very close together in color, but they're different. And, oh, I think it looks so beachy. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this yet. Hmm, I might put this out in my Florida room. Super cute. Now I do need to drill some holes in the top for hangers. Since we're hanging this an opposite way, then it was built. And so I just use my drill and I'm gonna kind of eyeball two holes in here that I think are gonna be kind of even just two openings here so I can put some twine through there to make an easy hanger. You could always attach, I don't like to do like staples on the thin signs like this because my staples seem to go all the way through it, but you could also find other ways to do this if you did not want to use your drill, but I had mine nice and handy. So I am going to put a little bit of hot glue on my twine kind of make it into a, you know, solid surface, makes it easier to kind of poke it through. I always like to tie off my hangers on the front. I find that they hang better on my wall. And then I'm gonna cut that twine down. This is just twine from the Dollar Tree and do the same thing here on the other side. An easy peasy little Dollar Tree sign. So use like three items from the Dollar Tree. So that's what $3.75 plus a little bit of vinyl. Um, pretty a good deal for a large sign like this. And I think it's so beachy and fun. And this is how it turned out. Our little palm tree is in 80 degrees. I definitely knew that expression because I've made a t-shirt that, or a tank top that says that as well. Um, with sublimation, I think it's so fun. It's my favorite thing. I don't want it to be too hot. <laughs> And I think it turned out really beachy. What do you guys think about this DIY? Okay, it's tear tray time. I told you guys we were going to be doing a beach tear tray. And today we're doing the big one, the three tier tray. So um, I want to use some sand for mine. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree sand. I ended up needing all two bags of this because I'm going to cover all three tiers of my tear tray with sand because I want this to look beachy, right? This is my three-tiered galvanized metal tear tray from Target. Um, they used to have these in the kitchen section. I don't think they do anymore because um, I picked up my last one on clearance there. And so I do like a half a bag on the very top tier and we can start decorating that one. That's about how deep of the sand I went. Not too deep, but just kind of enough to cover the bottom. Now, the first item we're going to use for the tear tray is from the Target Dollar Spot. This was $5 and with their fairy garden stuff. And it's so cute. The one thing I'm going to use is the little lifeguard chair for this one. And I think this is perfect for a beach tear tray. There's not going to be a lot of DIYs for this beach tear tray because a lot of these items are super cute as is they had so many fun beach items for a tear tray you know smaller stuff this year at the dollar stores now i wanted somebody to sit in the little chair of uh, the, the lifeguard chair and so i'm going to use one of these little fairy garden birds i thought it would be funny if i like kind of set him in there i don't like to usually leave an empty chair if i can help it and so i'm just going to kind of sit him in there kind of like that not going to attach it or anything. Just sit them in there. That way you can reuse that chair later on. This was also from the fairy garden section at the dollar spot at Target. $5. I know, but look at how adorable it is. It's absolutely perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. 
and it couldn't be any beachier. All I have to do is take off this sticky tag. The color is perfect. It's got so much detail. It's got like the little fence around it. It's got surfboards. It's got windows. I love it. That's why a lot of this tear tray is going to be really quick today because I found just so many beautiful uh, beachy items. And this one is probably my favorite. It's nice and tall though. So it's definitely going to have to go on the top. Otherwise, it's not going to fit. So we're going to sit it here right next to our little lifeguard chair. So those are both items from the Target Dollar Spot. The little bird, though, there was from Dollar Tree, too. Now, this was from Dollar Tree from their fairy garden section. And it's a little rock with a little seahorse on the front of it. It's so cute. It's from the beach line from Fairy Garden. And he is perfect as is. I do want you to be able to see them though, and there are metal sides on the tray, so I thought I would boost it up a little bit with one of these little wood stems from the Dollar Tree to make sure that you're gonna be able to see it. So my top tier is not real big, really about four items is gonna fill it up. So there, that kind of fills in my third side. Um, I kind of want this to be a tier tray that you can see from all directions. So we're gonna decorate all, every side of all three tiers. Now I found this adorable little beach gnome for $4.50 at Dollar General. It says it's five o'clock and it looks like a little gnome with sunglasses, sandals. He's got like a little lay, a drink in his hand. I thought he looked beachy and I thought he looked really fun for summer. And he's tall too. So we're gonna stand him up on the other side of my little lifeguard tower. And I think that's gonna be enough for the top. So we can move on to the second tier. I told you this was gonna be a quick, easy beach tier tray. And I've been dying to put this one together. I had to wait until I had um, some open room though in my decor for another tier tray. Now this is, it says from the forest line. I don't know, I guess they have forest line, but it looks beachy to me. Of the fairy garden section at Dollar Tree. But as you can see, Mine is broken, the little flag on the top is broken off, but I thought no big deal, we could just make a new little flag. I'm just gonna use some of the Starfish Shore Living Ribbon from the Dollar Tree and kind of make our own little flag, kind of glue it to itself so it will like have decorations on both sides. And then I'm gonna have to cut it down to make it small enough to fit in that little flag holder, but Sometimes it's worth buying items broken at the Dollar Tree if that's the only time you're going to find it. But I thought this little sand castle was so cute. It's painted so nicely. And I just cut like a little V pennant. And I'm just going to put it in there with a little hot glue. Because I definitely needed a flag at the top of it, right? But look how nicely this one's painted. This little sand castle. And I think it's going to look so cute on our little beach themed tear tray. So that's going to be our first item down here on our second tier. And I love using the sand on the tier trays. Totally makes it beachy, right? Now, this little guy is from the Target Dollar Spot. A little seagull plush. He's so cute. Check it out. Target Dollar Spot right now, $3. They had two different versions of this little guy. They're both really cute. I mean, look at all of the details on this. For $3, I had to have a little seagull for my beach themed tear tray. And I just love him. I wanted to do a little bit of the beachy blues on this. And so he is definitely gonna fit in well, as did that little lifeguard um, house earlier from Target Dollar Spot. So we're gonna kind of sit him here. He's the perfect height, I think, to go here on the second tier. And this is probably, this is a big tear tray, but I put it together so quickly, I was impressed. Now this is another fairy garden item from Dollar Tree. This is from, um, couldn't read it there. Was it the beach line or the forest line? It doesn't really matter. They kind of mix them all together at the stores. But I noticed that it had a little pennant banner on the front, but it wasn't really painted. So I'm just gonna use a blue Sharpie and kind of um, color that in just to give it a little bit more color. I don't like these to be too colorful, but I found it looked a little washed out, right? With um, the things all being ivory. And then the little window here at the top, I'm gonna do the same thing with a red Sharpie 
just to give it a little bit more color. But it's already got the surfboard and the little life buoy on the front that are painted. I think those are fine. And it's just a little, another little lifeguard house or hut for our tear tray. And it's going to fit nicely down here next to our little seagull. I always love picking up any of these little beachy buildings about this size from the Target dollar spot. I think they're a great value. Now this cute little beach buoy I picked up at Dollar General and look at that. They're cheaper than Dollar Tree. A dollar. So this was their beach stuff they have this year. And I love the color of this. It's like my favorite color. All I have to do is take the tag off and it is ready to go. A lot of times when I do tear trays, I have to make um, DIY like at least half the stuff, but today we're doing pretty good here. And <laughs> the stores are really bringing it with the beach items. Very pleased. So I'm gonna sit that one right here next to that little house and kind of uh, show you down in there how it looks. It has a little starfish on the front and says beach. Now this little next item is a starfish tray that I got the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And it's kind of like a rough white ceramic, but I'm gonna kind of leave it that way. I kind of wanted it to be a white starfish, so I'm not gonna paint it or anything, but I'm gonna kind of stand it up against the pole here in the middle. And there'll be a cute little piece kind of peeking out from behind. Our next item, which is this. So this is from the Fairy Garden Beach Line at Dollar Tree 2. And it's another rock, but this one's got a little like mint green or blue octopus on top. And how adorable is he? I think he's perfect and he definitely needs to be a part of this beach tear tray. And he's not real tall, so we can sit him in front of that starfish with the starfish peeking out behind him. And I think that's nice. The, the second tier is all done and we can move on to the bottom. Now, normally I do like a pennant banner or something around the sides of this one, but since I'm using the sand today, I kind of think that was enough of a little extra beachy decoration. So we're gonna kind of leave it as is with the galvanized metal on the sides, no pennant banners. If you're wanting one for yours, you feel free because I always think they look really cute on there. But the bottom's big, so it took a whole bag of that Dollar Tree sand. And this is another one of the little fairy garden forest, it says. Um, like little beach huts. It's a little different than the first one. It's got like a different window, surfboard. It's got a seashell in front of it, but I love the beachy blue. It's got like a metal roof on it. And I thought that would be really cute for our tear tree as well. So we're going to put that down here in the bottom in our sand pit and keep moving along. This is one of the little um, beach buoy wind chimes from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. And whenever I saw these, I tried to pick them up because I love them. I've made a wind chime out of them. They're so cute, but I thought it'd be perfect size for a beach tear tray for a little buoy decoration. And the painting on there is just perfect. I love them. This is also from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. It is one of their turquoise starfish. You could use any color. My favorite ones were these blue ones, the light blue ones, and like the white ones. But if you couldn't find the color that you wanted, you could always paint these. They're super easy to paint because they're just made out of wood. Mine doesn't really need a hanger though, so I just snipped that off. The twine on the top is fine though but I'm gonna stand that up against the pole in the back of my tear tray as well. And I think that looks really cute. I like all the different colors of blue that we're using too. The next sign is from the Dollar Tree. It says relax. It's not short living or anything like that. It's from the regular aisle at Dollar Tree. It's a little bit smaller than the signs like this from the short living line at Dollar Tree. It's got like light gray for the E and A, like little bump out letters, but I thought the word relax would be perfect for a little beach sign for a tear tray. So I kind of want to make the letters a beachy blue. So I'm just going to use a makeup sponge and some cloudless um, apple barrel paint and just, just kind of paint those two letters, leaving the R, L, and X still white. Nice soft blue. And then I thought we would use these new little chipboard decor from Dollar Tree to give a little bit more beachy um, decor to this little relaxed sign. So I thought maybe one of these little 
Seahorses would look cute maybe on the A or the X over here. I love these. They're so cute and they're already kind of painted too. So I'm going to attach mine with a little hot glue here to the bottom of my X. I still want you to be able to kind of read it, but I wanted to give it a little beachy decoration. But then I wasn't real happy with the purple on the bottom of the tail because I really am not using any of that color today. So I'm going to use that same blue color that we used on the E and the A, the cloudless, and just kind of paint his tail that color. And then I wanted to use one more, so I thought maybe one of these little blue dolphins would be cute on the R, kind of wrapping around the top. They're very lightweight, so you can just kind of glue them on. And I like the little ocean um, print on it, but I wanted to lighten it up a little bit, so I just distressed that lightly with that same color. Just to make it coordinate with the E and the A on the sign. And I think this is perfect. I like that it's a little bit smaller than the Shore Living um, sign, so it is going to fit a little bit better on my tray. The next find is from Goodwill. I found this cute little blue sailboat. It's kind of dirty and <laughs> it was only like 50 cents, but I thought it would be a really cute decor for like a beach themed tier tray. So it's just a matter of cleaning this one up a little bit, getting the tag here off of the sail. And it was kind of covered in dirt as well, but the blue paint on there was intact, so I don't really need to paint it or anything. Originally, I was going to paint it, but once I cleaned it up, it looked pretty good. And then I thought we could just kind of decorate the sail with one of those little chipboard pieces from the Dollar Tree as well. This time, I'm opting for the Little Mermaid here. The colors are perfect to go with that sail. I thought of making, about making her sit on the like boat, but then I decided I would just decorate the sail with her just to give a little beachy coastal touch. And I just attached that to the little boat with hot glue. Super cute, super easy. And I think that's gonna look really good down here on the bottom tier of this tier tray. The height is perfect. Another shade of blue maybe. And we've almost got this finished. This item I found also at Target. It is not, it wasn't like necessarily fairy, fairy garden. It says wooden house. It's with their like beach and lake stuff and it's only $3. It is the Surf Shack. It's another shade of blue. The colors are really nice. The wood is really nice on it. Very high quality for $3. I'm loving these dollar spot items. And that is gonna finish off, I think, the bottom tier here of our little beach themed tier tray. And I will give you a little tour here. A little quick look around of all the items today on our tier tray. Like I was saying, there's not a lot of DIY going on because a lot of these were so cute and perfect as is. Using the Target Dollar Spot, Dollar Tree, and even some items from Dollar General. I don't often go there, but I do go there when they have beach stuff, that's for sure. And I love the little relax sign. My favorite item on there might be this cute little seagull. I mean, look at it. He's got so much detail. Oh, or it could be this cute little lifeguard house. I mean, adorable. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment and tell you that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can help support me here at Crafty Beach. And you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks like shout-outs. And I want to give a huge shout-out thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bum members. I have 11. So thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Stacy Gravat, Sandra Ray, and Carrie R. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And now it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment your favorite DIY or find below, or just come say hello in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers. Just
wait mm, Wait for better days to come And carry us like wind in our sails Hold on tight I can smell the shore It's right in front of us if we just for watching and if you'd like to watch more crafty beach youtube thinks you might enjoy this video right here